Hello, everyone. Welcome to Feature Flurry. My name is Shi Gu. I'm a senior product marketing manager here at Snowflake. And with me, we have Saras. Hello, I'm Saras. I'm a senior product manager here at Snowflake. So today we're going to talk about how you can build continuous pipelines to manage incremental refreshes in Snowflake. So if you're building uh, change data capture, have streaming and real-time pipelines, um, and interesting, you know, building declaratively and lower down your costs, you want to listen to this. So Saras, tell us about it. What is this feature? So today we're talking about dynamic tables. Uh, dynamic tables are a new type of table that automatically, continuously, and incrementally process data, both batch and streaming. They're very simple to use. They are declarative, that you, as you mentioned. And what that means is you're only having to think about the logic, um, the transformations that you want to happen on your um, data as a select query without having to worry about the actual code to transform the data at each step. So it really makes it easy to uh, build your, your, your streaming as well as batch pipelines. Um, dynamic tables have been available in public preview for a little bit now. We announced it at uh, this prior summit. And so we're really excited about the adoption and excitement about it. So just to call out, if you haven't tried out dynamic tables yet, please go, go ahead and do so. They are available today. That's awesome. Uh, so tell us a little bit of a background here. Um, so why did Snowflake decide to work on it? Yeah, so we talked to a lot of customers and um, the number one pain point that we heard from them was complexity, complexity in batch pipelines, streaming pipelines. Um, and really where this complexity was coming from was trying to build incremental uh, data pipelines, meaning pipelines that only process data that has changed. This was a hard problem for a lot of customers to solve. And so that was one of the key areas where we saw customers dealing with a lot of complexity. There was also the fact that when pipelines become complex, you now have to start managing dependencies. You need to know um, your pipelines, what are the sources for it, and be able to process the data in order. That means now you're also having to spend time thinking about orchestration and reorchestrating your pipelines because they do become brittle. If you have these tight coupling between different stages in your pipeline, if anything changes, your pipeline ends up breaking. So all of this combined told us that customers were really um, having a hard time um, building data pipelines that were resilient and easy to use and monitor. So that was one of our driving forces. Another one of our driving forces was um, just the, the popularity of streaming. A lot of our customers are wanting to um, get faster insights from their data. Uh, but what they are lacking is the budget, the expertise, and the time to build complex streaming um, architectures and then spend just a whole lot of time trying to tune them. So what customers really asked us for was to be able to build streaming pipelines with the same tooling, with the same expertise that they've already been doing. So that's why streaming SQL, which is basically streaming um, stream processing of data with SQL semantics, really made it easy for customers to embrace streaming, build uh, pipelines that run faster and derive insights quicker, but with the expertise and the tooling that they already have in place. So it was a really easy shift for customers to now be thinking about uh, moving into the streaming space. And then finally, this is related, but flexibility was another one. Um, business requirements change all the time. And so customers ask for a, a way to think of latency and data freshness as a simple knob. That means you want to be able to dial frequency dial latency up or down as easy as like changing the volume so for example if you're running your pipelines every hour but come peak season you want to run it every five minutes it should not be a total re-architecture it should just be simple for you to change the target for your data freshness very easily so these were kind of some of the the key feedback points that we heard from a lot of customers that drove us to build dynamic tables and 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 uh, basically build it the way that we did so what are some of the top level benefits that we have seen? So one of the key benefits of dynamic tables is we really tried to simplify pipelines. We have native support for both batch and streaming data. And with the declarative semantics that we talked about earlier, it is super easy to build with no orchestration required and you don't have to manage any dependencies. The second part was also um, how to make dynamic tables cost effective. So customers told us that 
having to rebuild the tables all, all the time was uh, cost prohibitive. So with the incremental support that is built into dynamic tables, we really focused on being efficient and only processing data that has changed. And because the, the results of these uh, processing is materialized in a dynamic table, they are consistently uh, fast to query. And third, we wanted to make sure that dynamic tables fits with the rest of the data cloud. Uh, there is an expanding ecosystem. And so with dynamic tables, the security, the governance and optimization processes and postures that you're already used to is already um, integrated. So it really is part of the data cloud. So you don't have to, uh, there is no additional learning curve, basically. So we don't have a lot of time here, but show us a little bit of a sneak peek, like how to build pipelines with uh, dynamic tables. So the semantics are really simple. It resembles a CTAS statement. So create table as select statement. You are creating a dynamic table. So you do use the qualifier and there are a few additional parameters. So you specify the target lag. Target lag is your target for data freshness for the data product. Specify your warehouse, where should the compute run to process the data? And then you have the select query. This select query is the declarative piece. This is how you define what transformations are going to be applied on your data. Um, and once you uh, execute this, we create the dynamic table and we trigger the first refresh. So it starts to populate um, somewhat instantaneously. And then once the dynamic table is created, we will continuously update the, the, the data in it based on your target lag, uh, reading from the, the sources that you've defined. It acts, once the data has been materialized, it acts like any other table, so you can query it um, as you do any other Snowflake object. And because we materialize the results, you get um, consistent fast queries from or results of queries are, are consistently fast with dynamic tables. I will call out here though, in the select statement, what you can read from dynamic tables does uh, read from tables, it reads from views, it reads from other dynamic tables. So you can create a complex pipeline that looks like a DAG built off of various objects as well as dynamic tables themselves. That's very cool. Uh, just in a few lines of SQL, you can build your continuous pipelines this way. Uh, really quickly, what are some of the key features you want to uh, talk about or mention under the dynamic tables? I'll call out five key features here. Some of them we've already touched on, but really the dynamic tables are easy. They're declarative. So you don't have to think about the complexity of transformations at each step. Think about what is the output of your pipeline need to look like and provide that as a select query. You don't have to manage any orchestration or dependencies. All of that is offloaded and managed by dynamic tables for you. Second, we have broad SQL support. So you can use any core SQL syntax to define your transformations. Um, we do support joins, unions, aggregations, window functions, group buys, so on and so forth. So there is a lot of uh, broad support for SQL semantics. Number three, user-defined freshness. So with that target lag, you really can define how fresh you want the data to be in your dynamic table and use that as a lever to control your costs. So if you want to dial down costs, make the data freshness or the target lag uh, be a little longer. If you want faster pipelines, dial it down. It really is that simple. Number four is automatic incremental refreshes. So as I mentioned, we strive to always only process data that has changed since the last refresh. That is what we called incremental refresh or incremental logic here. And with dynamic tables, we have built in support for incremental refresh for a broad range of um, SQL constructs. Um, and yes, we also do support updates and deletes uh, in addition to inserts. And then finally, snapshot isolation. This is all dynamic tables in a DAG are always refreshed from a consistent snapshot. That means the results of your queries, the results materialized in a dynamic table will always make sense. That's awesome. Uh, that is a lot to learn in just a couple of minutes. But again, as Sarah's mentioned, dynamic tables is in public preview now. So everyone can go ahead and try it. Uh, make sure you check out the link in the resource section we have below. So we'll see you in the next feature flurry. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.